Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today what I'm going to be covering is how to make animated images for GUIs. So basically what you can do is make animated images using different frames for single images and then using conditions what you can do is basically make it so that they last a certain amount of time. You can control the frame amount so like how long it's going to uh, play that frame for you can have it down as low as one tick so there's quite a lot of uh, functionality you can actually use this with uh, you could have different little gadgets or whatever I have a quick demonstration when I right click on this block or any block for that matter I could click on snow layer if I really wanted to but um, it will open up a GUI you'll be able to see the animation that I quickly made and then I'll explain a little bit more so each frame when we open up the GUI you might have noticed that it starts at the uh, same location that it was at so that's basically because it is assigned to the player using player or entity MBT so when this inventory is open it is basically saving a mbt tag to the player and then looping it on a timer now this timer is the length of how many frames the actual image needs to be so basically with this uh, what you can do is you can basically set a mbt to the player I have this one called frame I think and then what I'm doing is I'm using conditions for each image so each one of these uh, particular uh, lines that light up are actually images so every time that it changes there's eight images so it cycles between a certain amount of ticks and then it's basically counting down from there so the timer basically switches between the two or between all of the eight different um, images and then using conditions we are able to determine which one to actually display now you can do this for faster uh, animation or slower uh, the lower the amount of ticks that you have is actually going to speed it up uh, the more ticks that you have will actually delay the image longer so this is a five tick delay so there's five ticks between each frame uh, so it would be like 1 to 5, I believe, and then it would be 6 to 10, and then so on. So I'll cover that in a little bit, but it needs to be calculated pretty precise because if it's just one tick off, you'll notice it'll kind of like jolt a little bit. Uh, it'll like go a little bit faster in some places and stuff like that. So when I was making this, I made sure to use exactly five ticks and you might just have to count with your fingers or something like that just to kind of make sure that you have the right amount of ticks and stuff for all of the different frames. Now, if you want to speed it up, you can uh, in certain parts. Uh, that's up to you. Uh, sometimes you might want to do that in some sort of animation process. Uh, say if you wanted to have a quicker reaction time if you were working with like an emoji or something like that then you might want to speed it up when it in certain parts and stuff like that but for this particular I don't know general texture uh, I just wanted kind of like a swirly icon and that was good enough all right so with that being said uh, this does work this method should work with uh, overlays as well overlay conditions uh, it's not too much different I'll kind of go over that in a little bit, but uh, let's go into M Creator and then we'll basically take it from there. All right, so we have our GUI, which is this uh, GUI animation. As you can see here, we have just a basic uh, texture for the background. If we go to the GUI procedure triggers down at the bottom here, uh, we have one set for while this GUI is open tick. And then this is where we basically set up our timer here. So basically what we're doing is we're testing if the value is greater than and then one tick. So our one tick is going to be our bare minimum. I found that starting at zero is actually harder to plan out the amount of ticks that you need for each frame. So I started it at one. Uh, then what we have is we have a basic uh, decretion timer s system where it will get the variable 
uh, or set the variable with the current variable minus one. So basically what it's doing is it's basically getting the variable, subtracting one, and then up reapplying it to that same variable. And once it reaches one, because it'll do this for any value that is greater than one. So uh, for example, two or higher. So any value above that, it will basically count down from. Now, if it reaches one, because if it's greater than one, this means any value not one, but higher. So if it's greater than one, so or equals to one, pardon me, uh, then what it's going to do is it's going to set the uh, default frame for that particular GUI. So what we need is 40 in the case that I have set up for the actual um, amount of frames that I have. So each one of those has a maximum of five ticks. It just equaled out that it would end up being about 40 ticks that I needed to actually do a full cycle. So 40 uh, is basically the number of how high we need to make the timer go to for a full cycle. Uh, just remember that number when we actually get into it. So again, we have the images. These are basically um, the actual image conditions. So we, when we right click on it, we can select the image. Uh, these are just basic images from the image tab here. You can basically import a new one and then set up the um, image display condition. Now this is basically what's going to cycle between uh, the frames. So I'll cover that in just a second for all the different ones, but um, each image has its own condition. Uh, named relevant to the actual image itself. So for example, this is uh, this image is called three. This is called image three condition. So if we go to eight, it's image eight condition. So we have all these different conditions for each one of these. That's important because we need to specify what frames uh, we want it to display as. So we'll cover that in just a second. Uh, the only other thing that really is relevant is just to have, make sure that they're overlapping each other. So for example, if we move this one right here, you can kind of see that I've basically used the grid tool uh, to basically snap it onto the actual uh, system. So all these images are basically overlaying each other uh, in the same place. Now that's important to make sure that it's a seamless anim animation. If it's going to be a little bit off of where the position of the other images, it's going to kind of look a little bit weird. So you want to make sure that it's directly over. The snapping tool is actually really handy for making sure that they are directly over each other. So you can use that tool if you want. All right, so that's basically the timer. Again, remember the 40 number, that's important. Let's take a look at the condition. So this is the um, image one condition. So we're actually going to be counting backwards from our condition. So basically our timer is going to be starting at 40 and then it's going to be counting down. So if you have your first image that is basically going clockwise in our case that we have um, that uh, kind of like a little loop thing that's going on for kind of like a loading screen or something like that. That can be our first frame when it's very at the very top part. And then it will kind of go to the, the right diagonal. Um, we'll just call it northeast uh, to make sure that it's easier to understand. So it'll be northeast. Now that will be our second frame, right? So that means that it's going to decrease in the amount that we want because our timer's decreasing. We want to start with our highest number and then work our way down. So with that case, uh, what I've done is I've used our highest number, which is the 40 from our, um, our timer itself. So this is our value that we're setting. And then I've basically subtracted uh, five values from that. So that would equal out 36 for the next value. And I'm using the equal to and greater than. You might need to play around with this a little bit to make sure that it works properly for your uh, thing. I've noticed that it's just easier to use equal to and greater than across the board than trying to set up the less than and greater than because most things are going to need a um, equal to or greater than greater than one anyways so 
like for the 40 we don't want it to be testing if it's less than 40 because it needs to be that value so we want to make sure that it's equal to that or equal to or less than 40 and basically what this is doing is any number between these two values is it's going to basically go ahead and um, count or display the image between those frames so uh, this would be like 40 uh, 39, 38, 37, and then 36, and then it will be the next frame on 35. So that's basically what it's doing. And then we're just basically returning true and then uh, returning false after if it doesn't need to be displaying. So if this condition is false, it's going to return false and not display the image. If it is true, then it's going to return true. Uh, to build this system, all you need to do is go to flow control, grab an if statement. That's one thing that you'll need. Uh, go to logic and then grab the light blue operator. It's um, the top one right here. It's not the one without like a uh, little button type thing. And then you want to go and click and and then external inputs. So it's on the line like this. Uh, you'll right click and then you have more options for the settings. Uh, if you right click on the button for the equal sign, you'll have more options for the and and stuff like that as well. And then what you want is a dark blue operator. Uh, this is going to be your equal to or greater than, which is equal to or greater than is the one with the underline. And then the greater than is on the facing the uh, right side where less than is facing the left side. After that, what you want to do is you want to go to entity data and then scroll down all the way to the bottom. And there should be one that says get entity slash target entity or pardon me, event slash target entity uh, custom number MBT tag and then tag name. So you want this value right here. You can call it whatever you want, but it needs to be the same throughout your GUI. So if you're going to be using uh, this for animations, it's probably best to call it uh, frame or something like that. So it's uh, easier to uh, remember. So we have that. And then what we need is a number variable. So we're going to just grab, go under math, grab a number, and then we're going to set this to what frames we want it to be between. So this will be our lower range frame. So this would be 36 in this case for this GUI. And then you want to repeat the, the blue block over again and create a second one. You can also duplicate it by right clicking and then going duplicate. And then you can just change the um, operator for the math block to equal to or less than, and you want this to be your frame, your maximum frame. So once you've done that, what you need to do is go to flow control, grab the kind of the medium blue um, return block, place that in here. And then what you want to do is go to logic, grab a true statement, and then you want to duplicate that, place that down here and set it to false. So that's all you need to do for that particular procedure. And um, again, if you want to set this to a faster tick rate, uh, you could do something like one tick and then two tick. And then what that will do is it will tick from between one and two. So it'll be a total of one tick uh, for the actual time that it takes to display. Uh, again, you have to update all of the conditions in order to work with that. But uh, in our case, we have it already configured. So that part's done. Uh, we've covered that part. I'll cover the timer right now. So basically the timer is pretty straightforward. You need an if statement, but one with an else statement. So you want this one right here. And then what you want is a dark blue math operator. And then what you want to do is click the equal sign or the button and then click greater than. So basically it's the one without the line. And then what you want to do is you want a math operator or pardon me, a math number. So you want the number right here, set that to one. And then you want to get the entity MBT data. Same thing as the other location. So entity data, and then you want the one right here. And then you want to call this the same name. So frame 
and then finally we want to go to entity management and grab the set um, event slash target entity custom mbt data or tag and then the tag name and then what you're going to do is you're going to drag that block for the number outside of here you're going to actually set that number to one and you're going to make sure that this name is the same as your frame for what you're basically using for your actual um, display uh, conditions as well and then what you want to do is grab a math operation so this is going to be under math and then you want to click this one and then you want to set this to subtract and then you want to put the number right there and then you can just duplicate this block that you're using for your condition and place that directly onto there now once that is done what you want to do is you want to duplicate this um, set block and then you're going to put that down here and then you're going to remove the math operation and then you're going to set this to your maximum um, frame amount so in this case it's 40. all right so that's basically how you create the timer itself so it's pretty straightforward stuff all right so the other thing we have a whole bunch of conditions obviously that was our first one this is our second one this is between 35 and 31 uh the three is between 30 and 26 so as you can see like the 31 is um one above 30 so if we go back to our second condition 31 and then we have 30 so 30 and then it's 36 and then if we open up four it'll be 25 or oh, pardon me, uh, 26, pardon me, and then 25, 21, and the other one will be 20, and then 20, 26, or no, 16, I think. So 5 is 20 and 16, and then we have 15 and 11, and then we have 10 and 6, and then our last condition, what we have is five and one so basically what this will do is it will count exactly five ticks or i guess like between five ticks because it has one to five so that's five exactly ticks that is going to be displaying each one of these um, conditions for now i did mention that you can do this with overlays as well so basically with the overlays i'll just cover this quickly but if you open up uh, create a new overlay you're going to need multiple overlays for this to work but um, well in most senses uh, or most cases so if we go to where's overlay uh, da, 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 overlay so we'll create a new one and uh, if you want to add a base texture this is where you'll need actual multiple um, overlays for the system so for example if you were to click on this we'll just set our image here for example and then you want to set your display overlay in game uh, this will be the basically the condition for your actual um, display thing now the setup for this is a little bit different uh, there isn't any of those uh, while open tick updates so unlike the GUI where you were able to basically set it up through your um, triggers for the GUI. This would have to be done through, your timer would have to be done through the uh, player tick update. So for example, uh, you would basically apply the uh, this procedure to a global, pr global trigger. So it would be player on player tick update for this particular one uh, sadly though this would be conflict with other multiple GUIs or overlays pardon me so if you have multiple overlays with different purposes uh, you would want to make sure that these names are different uh, reason being is it's going to um, always constantly go be going unlike the um, condition for the the GUIs where it's only happening when the GUI is open however you are able to basically animate them through the conditions uh, very similar to how we had it set up for the actual um, 
GUI itself, but uh, we can set it up through the conditions for this one and then just have the timer run for the player tick update. Uh, so that's basically the only difference is you're running it through a tick update and then selecting or setting your actual frames for your overlay. Now you'll need multiple overlays for this to work. I think images still have um, conditions, so you would be able to do it through one condition for each image as well. So if you wanted to not use just a background, uh, you could do it through images as well. So you could basically set this up and then over basically stack your images uh, to however you want. And you could basically create an overlay like that. So you would have to add your image and then select your um, your actual display condition and then make sure that it's over the same image and stuff like that. It might take a little bit of time to set up, but once you do that, you'll be able to have it uh, animated. Now, if you're using a display condition uh, for the backgrounds, you'll have to use the display condition for the overlay. Uh, that's the only way that it would be possible. Uh, images are a little bit different because they have a built-in uh, display condition. But if you're using backgrounds for something that's animated, then you'll have to make multiple um, multiple actual overlays for it to work. So hopefully that uh, clears up some stuff. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, write the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.